Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord be with you and also with you. It is such a great pleasure to welcome everyone to worship this day. In the name of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. It's important to remember that aspect of who God is, that three and one, that one in three every day, but especially on this Sunday, which we celebrate as Trinity Sunday, where we particularly ponder the mystery of who God is and how God has revealed God's self to be to us. And we take to heart the truth that within God's very being is a community that in God's heart dwells a multitude, and that all are welcome in God's embrace. So thank you again for being here today, all you who are here in person, as well as those who may be worshiping online via our Facebook live stream or watching a recorded version of this service. Thank you for being a part of our worship, our praise, our service of God today as we try to live the good news here at First Presbyterian Church of Garner and grow as disciples of Christ. I have some announcements uh, about what is going on at the church in this season. As I make those announcements, I do invite you to take the welcome pads that are on the center, uh, the, the, near the center aisle on each pew, and to sign and pass along for others to sign so we can see who is worshiping with us today and keep track of that. Uh, first, uh, you see, resuming uh, again uh, in quite a number, is our sanctuary choir, uh, who will be singing today, leading our hymns, as well as offering an anthem in the garden. We are delighted that Lisa Jackson has volunteered to direct the choir uh, until we do have a new director of music ministries, uh, interviews for which will happen before the end of June. Um, we're also delighted again to have our substitute organist, Chris Curbello, with us. Uh, and Chris, no extra pressure, but the person that you are subbing for um, is here in the sanctuary worshiping with us. So, um, you know, uh, y'all can, can talk later. Next Sunday, uh, Vanessa Hawkins, the Reverend Vanessa Hawkins, the uh, transitional executive presbyter for the Presbytery of New Hope, will be preaching at uh, worship. Um, that is because I will be out of town part of this week, attending the funeral in Birmingham for my grandfather who passed away uh, a little over a month ago. 
Um, I will also be in worship assisting with Vanessa and the other liturgists, but I'm delighted that she will be taking on the preaching task for that day. Please make sure to be here for her word to us and for our continued life of worship together. Since I will be gone from about Wednesday till uh, Friday of next week, if you do have a pastoral care concern, please call the church office uh, and look for our weekly congregational emails with other contact information for deacons if you need uh, a pastoral need addressed. See also all the printed... At this time, it is also my delight to uh, have a time when we welcome and receive a new member. And so on behalf of the session, I would like to present this new member of our congregation today, someone who is rejoining us by transfer of church leather, Wilda Prince. Wilda, will you please come forward and join me here in the chancel area? Friends, hear these words from Scripture. In baptism, we were claimed by God and marked as Christ's own forever and joined to Christ's body by the Holy Spirit. So we always welcome new members like you, Wilda, not as strangers, but as friends. Friends in Christ and fellow longtime members of the household of God. For we recall the words of Scripture that there is one body, one spirit, one hope, of our calling, one faith, one Lord, who is above all and through all and in all. Especially this is true for you, Wilda, for you rejoin us having previously been a member of First Presbyterian Garner before going in ways that God had led you and then now coming back home. And so it is our great joy to welcome you into this fellowship of believers on 503 Lakeside once more. As we welcome one another, we also take opportunity to share our common faith. And so we'll ask you these questions to help each of us be bound to one another and to the triune God who loves us. So Wilda, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And Wilda, will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for welcoming us into your presence this day and equipping us to serve you by serving others with the same love and compassion that was in Christ our Savior. We offer gratitude also for Wilda, for her spirit of resilience and care, for her gifts of insight, wisdom, hospitality, for her courage, and particularly through the blessings of food and friendship she so freely offers. May this church's faith be deepened by her joining us in membership, and may her own discipleship discover new possibilities for living your good news as we worship, study, serve, and gather in your name. Amen. And now, Wilda, I say to you in particular, but also to all of us who bear witness today, remember your creation as a child of God, your baptism as a disciple of Jesus Christ, and be thankful, trusting that the Holy Spirit is at work within you. To God be the glory. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, I invite you at the end of the service, as when the prelude is going, we're all exiting, make sure to, to, to find Wilda, not everybody at once, um, but do to, to greet her, as well as her family who is here with her, to welcome her officially back into uh, the fellowship of this congregation. Will the God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. And friends, let us now continue to worship God as we are called to worship by our liturgist for the day, Carol Oria.
please join me in the responsive call to worship. O Holy Trinity, one God in three persons, we behold in the splendor of creation your majesty and our responsibility. We behold in the face of Jesus Christ your divinity and our humanity. We behold in the spirit of truth your glory and our calling. Bound to you forever, we will praise your name. Okay, please stand as you are able to sing our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. stand in that grace because of God's loving kindness, made able to tell the truth and confess our sins before God, made able to receive the forgiveness and peace we long for. And so we turn then to a time of confession, a time of telling the truth about where we have gone astray, where we have been lost, and where God has found us. So let us offer that prayer of confession you find in your bulletin, and then after it, let us also confess our sins silently. Friends, with one heart and voice, let us pray. Triune God, with your own life, there is mutuality, equality, and unity in diversity. Though we are made in your image, we confess that we distort the triune life. We go our own way rather than seek common good. We seek our gain rather than look to the needs of others. We become lost in our own desires for prestige and power. Holy God, forgive us. Find us. Fashion in us again 
a willing spirit that bears your image with grace and joy. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Friends, lost as we may feel from time to time, we still stand forever and always due to the grace of Jesus Christ. And because God loves us in this way, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, we are set free to love God and neighbor and to love ourself as we ought. And we are empowered to share that peace and work for reconciliation in the world. So may we do so, living again the good news together, that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Alleluia and amen. Indeed, friends, we are able to share the peace of Christ with one another, to welcome each other as friends and no longer strangers. And so invite us to pass along the peace of Christ that we have known, first through the call and response, and then as you feel able to stand and to greet your neighbors around you with signs and gestures of peace. When you hear the tune for the Gloria Patri, you're invited to return to your uh, uh, place and to remain standing as we sing that. If you need the words for the Gloria Patri, they are on these laminated worship cards in the pew in front of you. Friends, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Let us share peace with one another. Friends, you may be seated. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Jane Kanabi forward, who will be leading our conversation with the young and young at heart, and invite any of our young disciples to come forward. I see we've got a couple in the balcony there that are coming down, um, and anyone else who would like to come forward can do so. I'm going to talk from the lectern. I have. A, I know both of y'all have dogs. Yeah. yeah. Um. You do you have one or two? I have two. You have two. No, I, you still have two dogs. They're big dogs. Well, I have a story about Kyle, and Kyle was excited that their family dog had puppies. But I'm sure your family dogs probably are fixed where they can't have puppies. Well, Kyle's dad had promised that 
one of the dogs Kyle could get. Well, one day, um, Kyle's mom said, I need to clean out the puppy's crate and the mom dog needs a break. So can you take the puppies outside and watch them? Well, the puppies, being puppies, they were so happy. They were rolling and running in the grass and having a good time, but that was six puppies that Kyle had to watch. Well, when the mom was done cleaning out the crate, she came to get the puppies. Well, the mom could only find five puppies. One was missing. So the mom took the puppies back to the mom dog and Kyle had to look for the lost puppy. Well, it, he looked everywhere. He went to the sandbox, puppy wasn't there. Went to the swing set, puppy wasn't there. Went to the garden, puppy wasn't there. And then he heard over the fence, the puppy whining. And so sure enough, the little puppy being puppies and dogs, they find a hole under a fence and he climbed under the fence and got in the neighbor's yard. So Kyle was able to get the dog back and bring him back home to his, his mom and to the, the mom dog and the other puppies. Now. What do I have here? Do you want to hold one? That's a sheep. And later today, I mean, later immediately, um, we're going to be talking about um, a story in Luke, and it has to do with sheep and a lost sheep. Now, those sheep are actually salt and pepper shakers, and so which one do you have? Salt. And what do you have, Noah? Pepper. Pepper. So if I had one without the other, that wouldn't be good, would it? We need salt and pepper. Well, you'll hear, and I want you to listen and see how the story about the sheep and what Jesus told his disciples, disciples about a lost sheep and how it kind of relates to the story with the puppies. Because one thing that we do learn is that God cares for us and doesn't want any of us to be lost. And so there's great effort to find the missing one. So let's take a minute to pray. God in heaven, thank you for your love. We are glad that you don't want to, us to be lost and that Jesus told people this story of the lost sheep to show us how much you love and care for us. Amen. So, here, I'll, I'll need my soul. <laughs> well, it seems kind of big, though. Okay. <laughs>
please join me for a pair of a prayer of illumination. Triune God is there. Triune God, you still have many things to say to us. Speak, and we will try to bear them and trust them so that our lives might glorify you, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. I will now read from 1 Timothy, verses 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, make me, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal and visible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. A reading now from the Gospel of Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I've found the coin that I'd lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of angels, of the angels of God, over one sinner who repents. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Amen.
Well, my, well, my friend, you, you're, in, you're in the right place. And so let me, let me uh, uh, as we worship, as we pray, as, as we do this, let's, let's talk after our worship service. Let's see what kind of help we can, we can give you at that time. We'll, we'll, we'll talk after our worship service, after our benediction and blessing. You come find me, and we'll, we'll talk some more. And if any, any other folks want to join us, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. You know, that's actually a pretty good, a pretty good introduction to today's sermon about God who seeks, about a God who finds us when we are lost. One of the stories that hits me when I think about that comes from a seminary professor of mine, Roger Nishioka, who in his devotional book, Rooted in Love, shares a story of a pastor who sought his advice regarding a young woman in her church. This youth had been a consistent presence in the church's ministry, but recently had begun to drift away. A development accompanied by a decline in her academic performance and more frequent arguments with her parents. A new relationship was seen as the cause of this behavior. And in her deep concern, this pastor told Roger, I'm just so worried. We're losing her, don't you see? If we lose her, she's going to be lost forever. It's not an uncommon sentiment, I dare say. I expect some of you have often felt the same way in your life. I know I have certainly said those words or had that fear of being lost forever. And so Roger's response to this pastor is, especially for our hearts when they feel that way. Do you really think, he said, that the God who created this young woman and created all of us redeemed her in Jesus Christ, and sent God's Holy Spirit to sustain her, is going to cast her out forever. After Roger said this, the phone was silent. And so again, Roger offered a needed word, reminding this pastor, reminding All of us, really, that always and forever, we, each of us, no matter what, belong to a God who creates and saves and sustains. A God who seeks and finds and rejoices over the return of the lost. This is the God who meets us in our scripture today. This is the God who shows up in so many ways in our lives through the work of the Spirit. But in the Scripture, first in Paul's letter to his apprentice in ministry, Timothy, though he never uses the word, Paul certainly describes himself in terms we might identify as lost enmeshed in violence, clouded by ignorance and unbelief, and with his typical Pauline flourish, he says he is the foremost, the best of sinners. Only Paul would do that. And yet Paul is even more adamant that whatever distance there was between him and God, It did not deter God in the slightest. God who created Paul still sought him out. Christ, with grace overflowing, saved Paul and continued patiently to sustain him 
with divine mercy and love. A claim surely worthy of full acceptance. In the same way, Jesus speaks of God as one who seeks and saves the lost. First, as a shepherd who strangely, boldly is unafraid to leave behind the rest of the flock. Who seeks and finds and returns with the lamb on its shoulders. And then, God is compared to a woman, which notably is the only time in the New Testament when a parable presents as a metaphor or allegory for God, presents a woman as a metaphor or allegory for God. And this woman is unrelenting. The divine becomes covered in dust as she lights a lamp and sweeps up the dirt, searching, seeking, finding the lost coin. And it is notable, too, that joy is the emphasis for Paul and for Jesus. Paul's proclamation of God's seeking nature concludes with his own version of a Gloria Patri. While Jesus is speaking among tax collectors and sinners who may feel lost, and to scribes and Pharisees who are often blinded to the fact that they are lost by their own ignorance and arrogance. Jesus insists that God's deepest joy is prompted not by personal repentance or pious morality, but by the very work of crossing the distance. The very discipline of seeking and finding. The very act of searching and looking for a church, of seeking help, of trusting that God will be there. This is also what the church's doctrine of the Trinity teaches us. That the very core of God's being is a joyful dance among three distinct but interrelated persons. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who from beginning to end creates and saves, sustains, and seeks. Seeks and finds us wherever we are. This joy of God's seeking, though, is also meant to be not just for God, but for us. It's meant to be contagious, for we are also called to be an example. As Paul says he is, to recall how we also have been found by God, so that we might also cross the distance as best we can, to share and to love, to work for peace, to offer mercy in a world that often seems lost forever in the grip of violence and arrogance and division. We are invited as friends and neighbors of the shepherd and of the woman to discover the joy that nothing, nothing is lost forever. And to consider how we might also search and seek and find those who feel separate, cut off, lost in paths that they see no way out of. We are asked, we have been asked through God's word to once again place our trust in the triune God, whom alone we worship and serve each week as we read scripture, as we recite the Apostles' Creed in just a moment, as we sing the glory of Patri, as we have already done, as we say the Lord's Prayer, as we proclaim that from beginning to end in life and in death, from the deepest depths to the highest heavens, God creates, God redeems, God sustains, God seeks and finds 
God rejoices in being with us and with all others. There are so many opportunities then to rejoice with God in this season. As we welcome new members, as we hear from folks who have just now found us, as we move ever closer into the paths of ministry that God has laid out for us, finding a new music director, beginning new ministries of health and wellness, as we prepare for a faith fest in July that seeks to close distance that could be between our church and our community. We would do well to remember that as we seek in these ways, that our searching will not be done without its own lumps and bruises. It will be awkward, as leaving behind 99 often is. It will require vulnerability and bold, strange courage. There will have to be a willingness to stoop down to look under every object. We'll get a little dusty as we sweep. Perhaps we'll even need to set aside some well-loved familiarity to continue embracing the joy of the new thing God is doing. But may we be encouraged by this, that the more we seek, the closer we draw to the true joy and delight of the triune God. The more we seek, the more we discover that no one, not us, not our world, not anyone, is lost forever. For the God who creates and redeems and sustains the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is also and always the God who seeks. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Oh God, may you seal upon us your word read and proclaimed and lived out among us. Help us know how we can best serve you. For we pray in the name of you who sees us and loves us and surrounds us always. Amen. I invite you now once again to stand as you are able as we sing hymn number 353. My hope is built on nothing less.
Friends, I invite you to remain standing as you are able, as we share what the church believes using the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Again, if you need the words for that, they are on the laminated sheet in the pew. With one heart and voice, let us say what it is the church throughout the years has believed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Having heard God's word proclaimed, we respond then also with prayers. Trusting that God can act, that God hears our concerns, that God knows our joys and addresses both. And so let us now unite in prayer as we offer our prayers of the people. Holy God, you are more than we can know or name, yet we call on you again and again. For you alone are holy, holy, holy. We cannot live apart from you, for you have called us into your triune life. Your steadfast love surrounds us all our days, wherever we may be, on a high mountain or a path in a shadowed valley, at a crossroads on our journey or outside the gates of welcome in some inner circle. You call to us, delighting in humanity. So we come before you with thanksgiving, or at least as much as we can muster this day, for all the gifts you have given that also delight us, for the beauty of this season, for the lives of those who bless us beyond their knowing, for this community of faith by which we are nurtured and challenged, for members, friends, and guests who we worship with, for opportunities to serve you by serving others, for goals accomplished and good work still left to do, and the gift of life granted yet again. We come before you humbly and hopeful and need, for those we know who are suffering today, illnesses of mind, body, or spirit. For those trying to make a difficult decision. For those grieving a loss and ending a dream deferred. We pray for those whose livelihood is precarious, who live at the edge of poverty's precipice, or who live in temporary shelter and tenuous provision. Our hearts go out to those who know the violence of natural disaster, the rages of war, the helplessness of justice denied. And so in the public square, in the privacy of our own conscience, in our ministry together, help us find the will and the way toward a common good. Root out of our hearts the seeds of bigotry and narrow-mindedness, Stir us from apathy, increase in us empathy, that we may love as you love. O oh, holy God, we desire to rejoice as you do, of the return of even one into your loving embrace. So make our joy complete. Hear us as we pray. We pray in the name of you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Amen. 
So now, friends, with the boldness of the children of God, I invite you to join me as we share together the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, let us once again stand as we are able and sing our hymn of sending number 543, God Be the Love to Search and Keep Me. Please remain standing as you are able as we join in the litany of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks for God's presence with us today as we sing together the doxology. Friends, you have come. Though you may have been lost and wandering, you have come and you have found yourselves here. The saying is worthy and true of full acceptance. God seeks and God has found us. So let's go from this place to love and serve the Lord, to live our hope and not our fear. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. Today, now, and always. Alleluia and amen. And in response, let us sing, Go Now in Peace. 